Wake up, ma'am fam, we're rope dropping in Disney World. Good morning, ma'am fam, and welcome back to the Rope Drop series. Today, we are rope dropping the busiest park in Walt Disney World, Magic Kingdom. So come along for some early morning fun. We'll take a look at what the wait times are like, what you can do in that early park entry, have some breakfast. Think it'll be a lot of fun? Let's get to it. Cabin's log, it's A12. Early park admission starts at 8.30. I don't know which line to go in, because they none of them appear to be a specific line for resort guests. I will get an update from a cast member. Cabin's log. 812, a few seconds later, a cast member just told me that go in and the resort entrance is inside the park on Main Street. They're just trying to get everybody in at this point so there's not a backup at the turnstiles. Very operationally smart idea. So now we're going to do that. <laughs> Cabin's log, 815, in the park, walking down Main Street. As you can tell, Main Street's very busy because they're letting everybody into the park so far. And then they're going to section off resort guests to the right to go into Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. If you want a shot of basically an empty Main Street, this is not the way to do it. The best way to do it, pretty much the only way to do it, is by booking the earliest breakfast reservation you can find at Cinderella's Royal Table or Crystal Palace. They often do like an 8 a.m. That's the best way to get in here before the crowds if you want pictures on Main Street with not a lot of people in them. Sweet cast members told me to go towards Tomorrowland Bridge for resort guests. Pretty much, it is worth noting for early park admission at Magic Kingdom, only two lands are open, Tomorrowland and Fantasyland. So if you're attempting to rope drop Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Pirates of the Caribbean, or Haunted Mansion, this is not going to be it for you. You're going to want to choose like Space Mountain, or what well, most people, including us, are going to choose Seven Doors Mine Train. We're going to see how long it takes. May not be the smartest decision I've ever made, but we're going to clock it. Now, the good news about that is, as a resort guest, you kind of get two rope drops because you get resort guest rope drop now, and then you get full park rope drop at nine or whatever time the park opens, 30 minutes later. And that means for non-resort guests, you can also rope drop successfully to the other lanes of the park since nobody can get to Adventureland, Frontierland, Liberty Square until nine. Hello, how are you? Thank you. All right, uh, worked out well, but always have your reservation conservation pulled up or screenshotted as my pro tip, just in case your phone or magic band doesn't want to read. But that's how you prove that you are a resort guest and you can get in a little further. Update, this could be a terrible idea because all these people are going for mine train. But we're going to go for mine train and we're going to see how long the line is. <laughs> Cabin's log, 8.22 a.m. Early theme park entry officially begins at 8.30. So it doesn't seem like they're letting anyone in early like they did at Animal Kingdom. And again, I predict most of these people are headed towards Seven Doors Mine Train. Maybe a smattering going towards Peter Pan Flight. And the big line over in Tomorrowland, I assume, is all going for Space Mountain. We're going to see how well this works. I do think Mine Train's a good choice. I'm hoping that this proves that because I bet even though I wait in somewhat of a line, it will be shorter than it is throughout most of the day. And if you're not wanting to purchase it as a fancy ride, it normally has like a 70 plus minute wait. A couple pro tips for rope drop. Uh, one, be on time. Be here early. Rope drop for resort guests is 30 minutes prior to the park opening. So you're going to want to be at the park at least 30 minutes before that. You got to get in, get your park admission through, you know, somebody in front of you, Blue Lane. Uh, you got to make sure you get in through the resort guest area as well. Um, so I would say be there earlier than I was, which was like 20 minutes before the park opened, but be there at least 30 minutes before the park opened. Transportation from resorts starts an hour before early theme park entry. So I would recommend being on the first bus, the first boat, the first monorail, whatever way you're getting to the park that day. I would be there an hour beforehand at the, at the stop. Also, most importantly, as always, pack those patient pants, friends. It's busy. Everyone's trying to get in. Just have your resort information ready. Be kind to the cast members and just know there's a lot of people trying to get in right now. So patience is needed. And shaky Jamaicans. We're moving. We're moving. Now, I will say one thing that is a little small bummer about rope dropping as a park entry guest is you're probably, unless you're super speedy or not going for mine train gonna miss the cute little welcome show they do on the castle stage right at nine or right a few minutes before nine it's it's adorable but i don't think worth not doing this unless you're just here for the early morning vibes which i commend you for does anyone remember the old morning show when it was back on the train station when they'd hold everybody in front of the train station and they would do a family of the day and all the characters would arrive on the train and it was so cute and magical. And I understand operationally why they couldn't keep doing it because there's too many people, but that's my childhood. Does anyone else remember that? Granted, that way did cause people to run down Main Street like they were giving away big screen TVs at the castle, whereas Black Friday. So, I get it. 
so far everyone's walking nicely and moving slowly and we love that because running's against the rules and cool kids follow the rules. Change of plans. The queue's already being quoted at 70 minutes. That's too many minutes for me. I'm not gonna wait 70 minutes to rope drop one ride. That's not really rope dropping. It'll be 70 minutes for most of the day. So we're learning together. And what we learned is that unless you're here really early, maybe mine train isn't the choice, but you have to make a decision during these early park entries. Do you want to ride one ride or a couple smaller rides? It's not a bad plan to knock out some of the smaller fantasy land rides that get long-ish lines. I'm talking like mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh or it's a small world that get like 45 minute lines. Cause that would, save you some time and save you trying to get some lightning lanes later. Okay, quick U-turn. I checked the wait times. Peter Pan's flight has a 45 minute wait. That feels too long as well for right now. Not long for the ride in general, but that would take all of my remaining early park entry time and make me miss rope drop into the next land, which I don't want to do. Okay, play and change again. Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh says it doesn't have a queue on the tip board, but I talked to the caster and they said it's a 30 minute wait. Unfortunately, Space Mountain is not open. It didn't open on time. It's got temporarily closed. So because of that, it's much busier here than it should be. Because Space Mountain should have sucked up a whole bunch of people and it didn't. So that means all the other lines are even longer. You could ride the carousel and be the only person on there. That'd be kind of magical. Maybe things don't go according to plan always in the parks. And that's true. But I do think this happens at Magic Kingdom more than any of the other parks because they only open two lands and because Magic Kingdom is the most popular park. It's more important here more than anywhere else to get to the park early, 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 which, you know what? I'm now treating this like early entry in Japan, which actually only lets you in like 15 minutes before the park opens, which is just enough time to get to where you wanna go, which is what we're gonna do now. I would rather move over towards Liberty Square and be able to rope drop Haunted Mansion from a closer angle than wait in a 30 minute line at Mini Adventures at Winnie the Pooh. All right, this looks like a much more manageable crowd of people. So we're gonna wait it for a few minutes and then rope drop Haunted Mansion and then move down, hopefully get on maybe Big Thunder and Pirates quickly before the rope drop period's officially gone. If you were coming into the park, Jungle Cruise is a great choice as well because that one gets quite a long line. All right, they let us in right at 9 a.m. Very courteous cast member said, please don't run me over. I'm gonna walk you guys into the queue. A lot of people started scooting down towards Frontierland and Adventureland, but morning's been chaotic, but it's all good because we're gonna get onto Mansion within five minutes. So choices must be made in these early morning adventures. Now, if I was coming for a full day of Magic Kingdom fun, I probably would have booked Peter Pan's flight as my first Genie Plus at 7 a.m. So I wouldn't have had to worry about that. And then I would be planning to also use it for Jungle Cruise and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, maybe Space Mountain. So. That is something to keep in mind as well, that this early morning time, I think is best used either attempting to do a fancy ride that you don't wanna pay additionally for, or knocking off a few of the popular Genie Plus attractions, just so you don't have to worry about working and fiddle faddling for those as well. See, little treat, we're getting to go through the full queue. I adore this queue. Also, did you know that this is a murder mystery? If you read the different plaques, you can figure out who killed who. Yeah. and who set it all up. What? Haunted Mansion, an opening day attraction, one of the most beloved, probably the most cult followed attraction in Disney history. No height requirement, but it is a little spooky scary at the beginning. However, it gets funny and silly at the end, and that's thanks to the main Imagineers, Claude Coates, responsible for spooky scary, and Mark Davis, responsible for fun and silly. This is an amazing attraction. It does get quite a long line, as we'll probably see throughout this video. So definitely Rope Dropper using Genie Plus is a good choice here. To find a way out. <laughs> right, nice. Haunted Mansion check, such a delight. 
And look at the line now. In fact, the lines are quite long for the park being officially open for like 20 minutes. Barnstormers have 40 minutes, so that's just a gut check right there. Big Thunder Mountain 35, Buzz 40, let's see, Dumbo 30, yikes. Haunted Mansion 45, Jungle Cruise 65, do do do. Meeting the Princesses 30 minutes, Peter Pan 80, Pirates 25, Mine Train 115, Space 55, glad it opened. Tomorrowland Speedway, 30 minutes. That should tell you something. And uh, so there's kind of a pulse check on what the park looks like. Very busy right after open. So we're headed down towards Adventureland, Frontierland area. I think I'm gonna go for Pirates. I was between that and Big Thunder, but Pirates is a 10 minute shorter queue. So let's head there. I made it into Pirates of the Caribbean, a 25 minute posted wait. We will clock it to see if that's true. This is my favorite ride in the park, so I'm thrilled to be able to do it right now. Hopefully it's not gonna take a full 25, but even if it does, that's one of the lowest weights in the park right now. Pirates of the Caribbean, an icon, a classic. It has no high requirement, just like Haunted Mansion, but it's still a fun family boat ride. It's got a little bit of thrill with that drop, with the Pirates' original music, but they have worked in, of course, our friends Captain Jack Sparrow and Barbosa from the movies, an A-plus attraction, no notes. Pirates of the Caribbean done, check, amazing. Only waited about 17 minutes, which is definitely less than 25, perfect. Now, as you can tell, the park is quite busy, so that kind of sweet rope drop spot is basically over at this point. It's just about 10 o'clock, which means the park's been open to everyone for an hour. So for our final land today, we're gonna head over to Tomorrowland because one, there's a cult favorite attraction that still doesn't have too long of a line and I wanna take a spin on that. And two, there's a breakfast item that's new er, not super new, but new er, and I've never tried it before and they stopped serving it in 30 minutes. So I don't really have time to do anything else because pretty much everything in the park, besides a couple filler rides, has a 30 minute wait or longer, most of them longer. In fact, let's do another wait time check. All right, one hour after the park has officially opened, you're looking at 35 minutes at Big Thunder Mound Railroad, which isn't actually too bad. 45 minutes at Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, 20 minutes at Dumbo, 65 already at Haunted Mansion, 35 at Small World, 60 at Jungle Cruise, 40 at the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, 45 to meet Mickey, 50 to meet Tiana, 80 for Peter Pan's Flight, 35 for Pirates, 130 for Mine Train, 55 at Space, still 40 at Speedway. So, definitely busy. Ooh, my heart is delighted. They're doing the castle show. They don't always do them so early. I'm tickled. I love this show so much. Let's watch for a few minutes. for the Magical Friendship Fair Grand Celebration! I just love that show so much. It literally makes me teary every time when Minnie's like, oh, this has been the best day ever. And Mickey's like, every day with you is the best day ever. Ugh. Goals. Also, I low-key think where the magic feels like home is one of the best original songs Disney's ever done. 
beautiful show. If you get the chance, see it. It happens several times a day right there on the castle stage. It's normally very hot here, so it is kind of brutal standing out there in the heat, but it's just a wonderful show. Tons of characters. Every kid around me was lighting up when Olaf came out and when Tiana came, like it's just, it's just joyful. And because I was gonna just watch the first number, I was just gonna watch Tiana, because I had my mobile order set for the lunching pad for this new breakfast item, new to me. And then I was like, no, this show's so much fun. I love it so much. So I was able to change my mobile order time to be a little bit later, to be actually the last breakfast window. Cause you know what? Coming to theme parks, you need a plan, but also, you know, stop and enjoy the magic. Enjoy some spontaneity too. I think people forget that a lot of times, especially at this park, everyone has their list and their agenda and they want to do as much as possible. And I fully understand that and I fully get that, but leave some room for some random magic too. And today that random magic for us was the show starting just as we were walking up towards the castle. Now, originally I was gonna ride People Mover and then pick up my breakfast from Lunching Pad, but because of the show, I swapped some things around. I was able to move my mobile order, which you can do as long as you haven't hit, I'm here, prepare my order. You can change the arrival window. And as long as there are more available times, you can do that. So I've now clicked, I'm here, prepare my order. And we're gonna flip flop how we do things. I'm gonna get breakfast first and then ride the People Mover. Mobile order called back, just waiting to grab it here at the Lunching Pad. This is the little quick service stand that's literally underneath Astro Orbiter and the People Mover. And normally throughout the day, they've got a couple different hot dogs. They've got the sweet cream cheese stuffed pretzel here, as well as some frozen beverages. But they do have a couple of breakfast items. They have a savory breakfast item, which is a bowl. And then they also have the sticky bubble bread, which is what I got, because I've heard it's amazing. Okay, I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news, they were out of the sticky bubble bread. And the system shouldn't have let me order it, but there was an error in the system. So the cast member let me know, unfortunately they did not have the sticky bubble bread today. But the good news, she was very sweet and let me swap it for the breakfast bowl. So we're gonna try this instead. She said I could have also done the cream cheese pretzel, which is one of my favorite snacks in the park and would be a good breakfast item because it's kind of like a bagel-ish. But I wanted to try this since I had not had this before. It is a breakfast bowl basically looks like tachos here. You've got potato barrels, AKA tater tots, topped with a cheese omelet, chili con carne queso, sour cream, and pico de gallo. Looks pretty good. I am more of a savory breakfast girly, so I think this will be tasty. I just wanted to try the sticky bubble bread because it looks nice as well. Ooh, look at all that cheese though. This may have been a great accidental deliciousness. Look at that. It's not stopping. It's literally not stopping. There's so much cheese. I'm so thrilled. Yeah, I'm into that. This was a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. The reason this works is the chili con queso. And you can actually taste that there's chili in there. Plus you've got the cheesy omelet, which is actually cooked quite nicely very fresh pico de gallo, and then some sour cream on top. The tater tots are cooked really nicely. I, I dare to say I like this more than the breakfast tacho bowl in Hollywood Studios at Woody's Lunchbox. Definitely shareable, a good hearty snack or a good breakfast. Again, only available till 10.30. I, I'm pleased. Other great places in this park to grab a quick breakfast. Gaston's Tavern in Fantasyland has that incredible giant cinnamon roll. You've also got Sleepy Hollow in Liberty Square, which has the fruit Nutella waffle sandwich, which can be a great breakfast. And in the morning, they also do Big Mickey waffles. You've got Friar's Nook in Fantasyland as well, which does a tacho bowl and some small donuts. This tacho bowl was much better though. And then there's also Westward Ho in Frontierland that serves breakfast sandwiches. Of course, you've also got Main Street Bakery, which is your Starbucks, or Joffrey's Revive here in Tomorrowland, which is your main Joffrey's location. So you have a couple good quick service options in the park, but I definitely recommend waiting a little bit. Most of these options go away around 10.30, but if you can wait till closer to that time and not waste your precious morning time eating, that is the best way to do it. Well, after that little delightful mix up. I'm headed to ride People Mover, which does have a 20 minute wait, which is actually pretty long for the People Mover, but I'm hoping it people moves quickly. <laughs> I lied to you. I didn't mean to, but I did, because I'm not gonna ride the People Mover because I uh, saw a cast member and asked them what the wait was just to make sure, and they said it's actually now 30 minutes. And we're pushing it, because I gotta get back to the contemporary um, to finish out that video and eat at Chef Thinkies.
which is actually one of my pro tips when it comes to rope dropping. I often recommend getting in, getting as much as you can done, and then doing a later morning breakfast if you're gonna do a sit down breakfast. So if you wanna do something like Crystal Palace, Cinderella's Royal Table, or even something nearby at one of the resorts like Chef Mickey's at the Contemporary, Ohana at Polynesian, or a non-character meal like Kona Cafe, Steakhouse 71, Grand Floridian Cafe. I often recommend doing that as like a late morning brunch situation as kind of a treat to yourself for getting here, getting up, getting as much as you can done in the morning. And then now is when the park starts being really, really busy. So step away for a minute, relax and luxuriate. So we did it. We rope dropped Magic Kingdom. A little more chaotic than the other videos, which I can't say that I'm surprised because it's Magic Kingdom. It's the most chaotic of all the parks. It's definitely the busiest of all of the parks. And it's usually for most people the most stressful of all the parks because this is Magic Kingdom. This is Disney. When people think Disney, this is the park that if most people are coming to one park, they're coming to Magic Kingdom. It's, again, usually the most crowded. And for most people, it has the most things they want to do. So what I notice a lot of guests feeling is stressed when they're at Magic Kingdom because they're trying to get everything done on their list. And uh, I understand you paid a lot of money to be here and, and you want to get a lot done. So let's talk about some of those best rope drop tips. For starters, if you are a resort guest coming in for early theme park entry, as we showed today, you need to get here early. Early, I would be on that first transportation that you can get out of here and into the park as quickly as possible. You're gonna have to make a decision. Are you going Tomorrowland or are you going Fantasyland? Most people are gonna go Space Mountain if they're in Tomorrowland. Most people are gonna go Mine Train and some are gonna go Peter Pan's Flight when they're going to Fantasyland. But if you don't get in early enough to actually get in one of those queues to make it worth being there early, meaning that the queue is actually short, then I'm gonna recommend taking advantage of some of the smaller attractions that still get longer lines. I'm talking Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. I'm talking Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I'm talking It's a Small World. If that still means lines are pretty long, then as we did today, I recommend using that early park entry as just getting a leg up into rope dropping the other attractions. Get as close as you can to Haunted Mansion or Big Thunder Mountain Railroad or maybe even Pirates of the Caribbean Jungle Cruise and be the, one of the first people on those attractions and kind of use your early park entry as just a way to get in the park faster. No matter what, I do not recommend using Genie Plus within the first couple hours of the park if you can avoid it. That way you can start stacking some of those lightning lanes for later when the park's even busier. Use the morning time to knock out a couple of those popular attractions. We were able to do Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean, two of the most beloved rides in the park, which means you don't have to worry about getting lightning lanes for those later. We have whole guides on Genie Plus in the different parks, just coming in for the evening as well as full guides. So check those out for your full how-to on Genie Plus. But using it first thing in the morning is not the best way to use the system. And as always with any Disney park, but especially here at Magic Kingdom more than any of the others in Walt Disney World, make your list of your must do attractions and work to get those things done, but be flexible and let some magic happen along the way. If you can write down like the five rides you absolutely have to do in the park, a couple of snacks you absolutely must try, and maybe some entertainment or characters you wanna see as well, work to get those things done. And then you have some flexibility to try some new snacks or see a show that you didn't realize was gonna happen at that time add on a few other attractions, and then it's kind of like you get your list done and everything else is bonus cherries on top. Yes, you wanna get a lot done when you're in these parks, but also the joy of being here with your friends and family. Don't forget about that too, and make sure you enjoy yourself and don't stress yourself out too much. So hopefully this was helpful to give you a realistic look at what it's like to rope drop here at Magic Kingdom. It is very, very busy today. It's a Wednesday. This past weekend was President's Day weekend. This upcoming weekend is race weekend, so it may be busier than a normal Wednesday, but it's also Wednesday in Magic Kingdom. And this is what it realistically looks like a lot of the time. We've got one Walt Disney World Park left in our Rope Drop series, Epcot. But I think we're gonna make this thing by coastal and take it out to Disneyland, also do the Universal Park. So let me know what other parks you wanna see the Rope Drop series at. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with the Man Fam and Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And it's been magical.